Hello my viewers, I hope you're doing well, you're doing good and this is another video on prayer and we're going in a little bit more into details about the rosary and the rosary prayer and I want to first of all help you to understand what the prayer of the rosary truly is and of course there are like protestants who claim that well it's maybe vain repetition or it's not uh, scriptural so why should we pray the rosary and i will get to answering these questions so let's get right into the video First of all, uh, a viewer asked me a question, how many types of rosaries are there in the Catholic Church? And I have to say that there are so many that uh, I'm sure I don't know all of them and most of them. <laughs> so uh, there's um, the four main mysteries, uh, the joyful, the sorrowful, the glorious, the luminous uh, that are uh, pretty widely known in uh, you know in the church and uh, with the people then some people might know the the rosary of the sorrowful mother uh, you have the um, the divine mercy chaplet which is also a rosary prayer um, you have the Jesus prayer rosary that I teach you have the rosary um, the Immaculata Rosary that was given to a seer called Barbara Royce. Um, there's many that I don't even know, so I can't even tell you how many rosaries there are and being prayed. And, um, you know, people are enlightened to pray. So in standard, um, most people know the standard rosary. I call it standard rosary. I don't know how else to say it. That's um, the four different mysteries uh, that we have. So um, next is, can you discuss the origins of the rosary? And yes, I will. And in order to do that, I will read from a book. It's called The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. And um, I will read to you about the origins of the rosary because I find it very helpful to read it to you. So, since the Holy Rosary is composed principally and in substance of the prayer of Christ and the angelic salutation, and we get into detail what all that is later, either in this video or another video, don't worry about it if you don't know all of it yet. The Our Father and the Hail Mary, it was without doubt the first prayer and the first devotion of the faithful and has been in use all through the centuries, from the time of the apostles and disciples down to the present. But it was only in the year 1214, however, that Holy Mother Church received the rosary in its present form and according to the method we use today. It was given to the church by St. Dominic, who had received it from the Blessed Virgin as a powerful means of converting the Albadinians and other sinners. I will tell you the story of how he received it, which is found in the very well-known book. It's called, and I'm gonna butcher the name, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't know French. Die Dignitate Psalteri, uh, I think it's, it's rather Latin. Uh, by Blessed Ellen de la Rouge. Saint Dominic, seeing that the gravity of the people's sin was hindering the conversion of the Albigenians, withdrew into a forest near Toulouse, where he prayed unceasingly for three days and three nights. During this time, he did nothing but weep and do harsh penances in order to appease the anger of God Almighty. He used his discipline so much that his body was lacerated and finally he fell into a coma. At this point, Our Lady appeared to him accompanied by three angels and she said, Dear Dominic, do you know which weapon the Blessed Trinity wants to use to reform the world? Oh, my Lady, answered Saint Dominic, you know far better than I do because next to you, Son Jesus Christ, you have always been the chief instrument for our salvation. Then Our Lady replied, 
I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering ram has always been the angelic psalter, which is the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to reach these hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my psalter. So he arose comforted and burning with zeal for the conversions of the people. In that district, he made straight for the cathedral. At once unseen angels ring the bells to gather the people together and St. Dominic began to preach. At the beginning, very beginning of his sermon, an appalling storm broke out. The earth shook, the sun was darkened, and there was so much thunder and lightning that all were very much afraid. Even greater was their fear when looking at a picture of Our Lady exposed in a prominent place, they saw her rise her arms to heaven three times to call down God's vengeance upon them if they they failed to be converted to amend their lives and to seek the protection of the Holy Mother of God. God wished by means of the supernatural phenomena to spread the new devotion of the Holy Rosary and to make it more widely known. At last, at the prayer of St. Dominic, the storm came to an end and he went on preaching. So fervently and compelling did he explain the importance and value of the Holy Rosary that almost all the people of Toulouse embraced it and renounced their false beliefs. In a very short time, a great improvement has been seen in the town and people began leading Christian lives and gave up their former bad habits. This miraculous way in which the devotion to the Holy Rosary was established is something of a parallel to the way in which Almighty God gave his law to the world on Mount Sinai and obviously proves its value and importance. Inspired by the Holy Ghost, introduced by the Blessed Virgin, as well as by his own experience, Saint Dominic preached the Holy Rosary for the rest of his life. He preached it by his example, as well as by sermons in cities and in country places to people of high station and low, before scholars and the uneducated, to Catholics and to all others. The Holy Rosary, which he said every day, was his preparation for every sermon and this little trust with Our Lady immediately after preaching. One day he had to preach at Notre Dame in Paris and it happened to be the feast of Saint John the Evangelist. He was in a little chapel behind the high altar, prayfully preparing his sermon by saying the rosary as he always did when Our Lady appeared to him and said, Dominic, even though what you have planned to say may be very good. I'm bringing you a much better sermon. St. Dominic took in his hands the book of Our Lady pro proffered, read the sermon carefully, and when he had understood it and meditated on it, he gave thanks to the Blessed Mother. When the time came, he went up into the pulpit and in spite of the feast day, made no mention of St. John other than to say that he had been found worthy to be the guardian of the Queen of Heaven. The congregation was made up of theologians and other eminent people who were used to hearing unusual and polished discourses, but St. Dominic told them that it was not his wish to give them a learned discourse, wise in the eyes of the world, but that he would speak in the simplicity of the Holy Rosary and with his forcefulness. So he began preaching the Holy Rosary and explained the Hail Mary, word by word, as you would to a group of children, and used the very simple illustrations which were in the Book of Our Lady had given him. Carthagena, the great scholar, quoting blessed Ellen de la Rue in the, again here, the Dignate Psyteri, describes how this took place. Blessed Ellen writes that one day Father Dominic said to him in a vision, my son, it is good to preach, but there is always a danger of looking for praise rather than the salvation of souls. Listen carefully to what happened to me in Paris so that you may be on guard against this kind of mistake. I was to preach in the great church dedicated to the Blessed Virgin, and I was particularly anxious to give a brilliant sermon, not out of pride, but because of the high intellectual stature of the congregation. An hour before the time I had to preach, I was recollected saying my rosary, as I always did before giving a sermon. When I fell into ecstasy, 
I saw my beloved friend, the mother of God, coming towards me with a book in her hand. Dominic, she said, your sermon for today may be very good indeed, but no matter how good it is, I have brought you one that is very much better. Of course, I was overjoyed, took the book and read every word. Just as Our Lady had said, I found exactly the right things to say in my sermon, so I thanked her with all of my heart. When I, it was time to begin, I saw that the University of Paris had turned out in full force as well as a large number of noblemen. They had all seen and heard of the great things that the good Lord had been doing through me, so I went up into the pulpit. It was the feast of St. John the Apostle, but all I said about him was that he had found, found worthy to be the guardian of the Queen of Heaven. Then I addressed the congregation. My lords and illustrious doctors of the university, you are accustomed to hearing learned sermons and suited to your aesthetic tastes. Now I do not want to speak to you in the scholarly language of human wisdom, but on the contrary, to show you the spirit of God and his greatness. Here ends the quotation from Blessed Ellen, after which Cart Cartagena goes on to say in his own words, then St. Dominic explained the angelic salutation to them using simple comparison examples from everyday life. Blessed Ellen, according to Cartagena, mentioned several other times when Our Lord and Our Lady appeared to St. Dominic to urge and inspire him to preach the rosary more and more in order to wipe out sin and to convert sinners and erratics. In another passage, Cartagena says, Blessed Ellen said Our Lady revealed to him that after she had appeared to St. Dominic, her blessed son appeared to him and said, Dominic, I rejoice to see that you are not relying upon your own wisdom and that rather than to seek the empty praise of men, you are working with great humility for the salvation of souls. But many priests want to preach thunderly against the worst kinds of sins at the very outset, failing to realize that before a sick person is given bitter medicine, he needs to be prepared by being put in the right frame of mind to really benefit by it. This is why before doing anything else, priests should try to kindle a love of prayer in people's hearts and especially a love of my angelic psalter. If only they would all start saying it and would really preserve God in his mercy, could hardly refuse to give them his grace. So I want you to preach the rosary. In, other pla in another place, Blessed Ellen says, all priests say a Hail Mary with a faithful before preaching to ask for God's grace. They do this because of a revelation that some Saint Dominic had from Our Lady. My son, she said one day, do not be surprised that your sermon failed to bear the results that you have hoped for. You're trying to cultivate a piece of ground which had not, which has not had any rain. Now, when Almighty God planned to renew the face of the earth, he started by sending down rain from heaven. And this was the angelic salutation. In this way, God made over the world so when you give a sermon, urge people to say, my rosary. And in this way, your words will bear much fruit for souls. St. Dominic lost no time in obeying, and from then on he exerted great influence by his sermons. This last quotation is from the Book of Miracles of the Holy Rosary, and it is also to be found in Justin's work. I have been very glad to quote these well-known authors word by word in the original Latin for benefit of any priest or other learned people who might otherwise have doubts as the marvelous power of the Holy Rosary. As long as priests follow St. Dominic's example and preach devotion to the Holy Rosary, piety and fervor thrive throughout the Christian world, and in those religious orders which were devoted to the Holy Rosary. But since people have neglected this gift from heaven, all kinds of sin and disorder have spread far and wide. All things, even the holiest, are subjected to change, especially when they are dependent on man's free will. It is hardly to be wondered that, then, that the confraternity of the Holy Rosary only retained its first fervor for one century after it was 
instituted by Saint Dominic. After this, it was like a thing buried and forgotten. So praying the rosary was forgotten. And I don't know how it is where you live, but in Germany is no one says the Holy Rosary anymore. There is like a few old people that might do it, but otherwise the Holy Rosary is even being really rejected, not only by the lay people, but also by priests. Doubtless too, the wicked scheming and jealousy of the devil were large responsible for getting people to neglect the Holy Rosary and thus block the flow of God's grace which it had drawn down upon the world. Thus, in 1349, God punished the whole Europe and sent the most terrible plague that had ever been known to every land. It started first in the East and spread throughout Italy, Germany, France, Poland, and Hungary, bringing desolation wherever it came. For out of a hundred men, hardly one lived to tell the tale. Big towns, little towns, villages, and monasteries were almost completely deserted during the three years of the epidemic lasted. This scourge of God was quickly followed by two others, the heresy of the Flagellants and a tragic schism in 1376. A schism is where um, the church is being separated basically from God and there's like a cut where people have fallen away, so um, it was really bad. Later on, when the trials were over, thanks to the mercy of God, Our Lady told Blessed Ellen to receive the ancient confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary. Blessed Ellen was one of the Dominican fathers from the monastery at Dinan in Brittany. He was an eminent theologian and was famous for his sermons. Our Lady chose him because since the confraternity had originally been started in this providence, it was most fitting that a Dominican from the very same providence should have the honor of re-establishing it. Blessed Ellen began this work in 1460 after a special warning from the Lord. This is how he received this urgent message as he tells it himself. One day when he was saying mass Our Lady, who wished to spur him on to preach the Holy Rosary, spoke to him in the sacred host. How can you crucify me again so soon, Jesus said. What did you say, Lord? asked Blessed Ellen, horrified. You crucified me once before by your sins, answered Jesus, and I would willingly be crucified again rather than have my father offended by the sins you used to commit. You are crucifying me again now because you have all the learnings and understandings that you need to preach. My mother's rosary and you are not doing so. If you only did this, you could teach many souls this right path and lead them away from sin. But you're not doing it and so yourself are guilty of the sins that they commit. This terrible reproach made blessed Ellen solemnly resolve to preach the Holy Rosary unceasingly. Our Lady, too, spoke to him one day to inspire him to preach the Holy Rosary more and more. You are a great sinner in your youth, she said, but I obtained the grace of your conversion for my son. Had such a thing been possible, I would have liked to have gone through all kinds of sufferings to save you because converted sinners are glory to me. And I would have done this also to make you worthy of preaching my rosary far and wide. St. Dominic appeared to bless Ellen as well and told him of the great results of his ministry. He had preached the Holy Rosary unceasingly. His sermons had borne great fruit and many people had to convert it during his missions. He said to blessed Ellen, see the wonderful results I have had through preaching the Holy Rosary. You and all those who love Our Lady ought to do the same thing by means of the holy practice of the Rosary. You may draw all people to the real signs of the virtues. Briefly then, this is the history of how St. Dominic established the Holy Rosary and of how Blessed Ellen de la Rouge restored it. So um, this video is kind of getting long. So the Hail Mary I'm going to explain in a different video. And we're also going to get to it. Um, 
there's always that sense of, well, why are you worshiping the mother? We are not worshiping the mother. And I want to make that clear that when we call upon Mary, we call upon her for intercession. And this, I just want to state that people, when they die, they're not gone. Their soul goes into uh, different places. There's the paradise, there's the purgatory, there's the hell, there is heaven. I can't go into detail for it, but saints are in heaven and are there to do intercession for us. So it's almost like, you know, uh, people ask me all the time to pray for them. And I will, I will do intercession for them. And for all of my viewers and followers, I pray every single day and do intercession. So if you ask somebody, would you please pray for me? That's intercession if they do. And we have the mother of Jesus, Mother Mary, who we can ask for intercession. And through the Holy Rosary, I'm just briefly stating this so you have already the first nugget, is the Holy Rosary is showing the life of Christ and we're meditating on it and we're asking for her intercession and she's always leading us to Christ. So we're asking her for intercession. We're not worshiping, but we need to also understand in a lot of Protestant church, uh, worship means singing. Worshiping is when we do the worship service at the beginning. And I have a Protestant background, so I know exactly what it is. So you think that that is worship. And in the Catholic Church, it's so much more than just singing. Singing is might be worship and a little part. And our main worship, though, is the Mass celebrating the Mass and the Holy Eucharist, which is so Christ-centered. So when we sing a song about Mary, we're not worshiping her. That's not part of our worship, but it is part of respectful venerance because she had a different, a very, very, very special place in Jesus' life. She was the first tabernacle that held Jesus with her body. She nursed him. Do you know that all babies, when um, you're pregnant, you are sharing cells, real cells with them? And even a blood mingles. So all of her life, she carried Jesus cells and part of his blood in her. Just imagine, just imagine. And you don't think she had a special place? Think of the intercession she made at the Feast of Canaan. And if you don't know this story, just briefly, they ran out of wine at a wedding and Jesus had not revealed himself. He doesn't publicly, hasn't spoken or done anything, done any sermons or any miracle work. And uh, they were at the wedding, his mother was there too, and they ran out of wine, which was really embarrassing to run out of wine in the middle of the wedding feast. And the wedding feast lasted for three days, so you had to have a little, lot of wine. And Mary went to her son and said, they ran out of wine. And his reply was like, woman, what do I have to do with it? And because of her intercession, the first miracle happened. Because he said it wasn't his time, but his mother knew it was his time. It's time now. And she ignored what he said, basically, and said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. He changed water into wine. And it not only did he show us that he wants to provide for us, even material needs, it wasn't crappy wine, but it was the best wine ever. So it shows you that God wants to provide for you and we have a mother that we can go to. 
she is in heaven and that we can ask her to do intercession for her. And that's a beautiful thing because he will listen to his mother. And the miraculous thing is that she's our mother in a sense too. So going further, so this video is not going to be too long. I will leave you here and we're going to keep continuing in the next video. God bless you.